First snowfall. Today is November twenty sixth. It snowed all day today. The snow is beautiful. The snow finally stopped. My sister and I are excited. My mom doesn't like the snow. My mom has to shovel the driveway. My sister and I get to play. I put on my hat and mittens. My mom puts on my scarf. My mom zippers my jacket. My sister puts on her hat and mittens. My mom puts on her scarf. My mom zippers her jacket. My sister and I go outside. We begin to make a snowman. My mom starts to shovel the snow. My sister and I make snow angels. My sister and I throw snowballs. It starts to snow again. We go inside for hot chocolate. Jessica's first day of school. Today is Jessica's first day of kindergarten. Jessica and her parents walk to school. Jessica's mom walks with her to her classroom. Jessica meets her teacher. His name is Mr. Parker. The school bell rings at eight forty-five a.m. Jessica hugs and kisses her mom goodbye. Jessica's mom says, "I love you." At nine a.m., Jessica stands for the national anthem. Mr. Parker calls out children's names. Each child yells back. Here, Mr. Parker teaches them about letters. Mr. Parker teaches them about numbers. At ten fifteen a.m., the students have recess. Recess is fun. The students get to play and eat. At ten thirty a.m., the students go to gym class. At eleven fifteen a.m., the students return to Mr. Parker's classroom. Mr. Parker tells the students to sit on the carpet. Mr. Parker reads the students a story. Mr. Parker teaches the students a song. The lunch bell rings. Jessica's first day of school is over. My flower garden. My name is Anne. I love flowers. I have a flower garden. My garden is in front of my house. My neighbor has a garden too. My garden has different types of flowers. I have roses in my garden. I have tulips in my garden. I have petunias in my garden. My garden has different colors. I plant red flowers. I plant orange flowers. I plant blue flowers. I plant purple flowers. I take care of my garden. I water my garden every day. I kill the weeds in my garden. I kill insects that eat my flowers. I love my beautiful garden. Going camping. The Bright family went camping on the weekend. The Bright family went to Silent Lake. The Bright family left on Friday. They camped for three days. The Bright family brought a big tent. They brought a lot of food. They brought insect repellent. The Bright family had a campfire on Friday. They roasted marshmallows. They sang campfire songs. On Saturday. They went canoeing. On Saturday, they went fishing. On Saturday, they went swimming. They went hiking on Sunday. The Bright family saw many birds. They saw blue jays. They saw hummingbirds. The Bright family saw many animals. They saw a raccoon. They saw a squirrel. But they didn't see a bear. The Bright family had a fun vacation. 
My house. I live in a house. My house is small. My house has two bedrooms. My mom and dad sleep in one bedroom. My sister and I share the other bedroom. My house has a kitchen. My mom and dad cook dinner there every night. My house has a living room. My family watches television there every night. My house has a big bathroom. My house has a lot of closets. My house has a basement. My dad has a workshop in the basement. My dad makes wood furniture. My house does not have a second floor. My house has a garage. My house has a big backyard. My backyard has a maple tree. My backyard has a swimming pool. My backyard has a vegetable garden. My family likes our house. My first pet. My name is Sarah. I am 14 years old. I have a pet cat. My cat's name is Milo. My cat is black and white. Milo's paws are white. Milo's body is black. She is very cute. Milo's fur is very soft. Milo was a very small kitten. Milo is a very big cat. Milo cannot have kittens. She is fixed. Milo likes to eat. Milo likes to play outside. Milo likes to hunt for birds. Milo likes to hunt for mice. She likes her ears scratched. Milo likes to sit in my lap. Milo likes to sleep on my bed. Milo is a good pet. Jennifer, the firefighter. Jennifer Smith is a firefighter. She is one of the first female firefighters. Jennifer works hard every day. Jennifer exercises every day. She lifts weights. She wants her muscles to be very strong. She saves people's lives every day. She is very strong. Jennifer is married. Her husband is a school teacher. Jennifer's husband is proud of her. Jennifer is a mother. She has two daughters. Jennifer's daughters are proud of her too. Jennifer is happy being a firefighter. Jennifer is happy being a wife. Jennifer is happy being a mother. Mark's big game. Mark's favorite sport is hockey. He is 15 years old. Mark practices three times a week. Practices are two hours long. Mark plays one game a week. Mark is a good hockey player. He plays on Friday nights. Friday night hockey games are popular. Mark's family watches him play. Mark's friends watch him play too. There are always many fans. Tonight is the big game. Coaches are coming to watch Mark play. Mark wants to play in the National Hockey League. Mark wants to make a lot of money. It is very hard to play in the NHL. Mark's parents want him to go to college. They want him to have an education. They want Mark to be successful. They want Mark to be happy. The Easter Egg Hunt. Samantha is going to an Easter egg hunt. Tracy is going to an Easter egg hunt. The Easter egg hunt is at Sydney's house. It is going to be fun. Sydney's mom hid chocolate eggs. Sydney's mom hid chocolate bunnies. Everybody is here. Everybody has an Easter basket. The Easter egg hunt can start. Everybody must close their eyes.
One, two, three, go! Samantha finds an Easter egg. The Easter egg is behind a table. She puts it in her basket. Tracy finds a chocolate Easter bunny. It's under the couch. Tracy puts it in her basket. Sydney finds a chocolate Easter bunny too. It's in front of the television. She puts it in her basket. Everybody finds lots of chocolate. Everybody shares their chocolate. Samantha, Tracy, and Sydney love Easter. Joe's first car. Joe is 18 years old. Joe works at McDonald's. Joe saves all his money. Joe has $2,500 in the bank. He wants to buy a sports car. Joe starts to look for a new car. Joe looks in the newspaper. Joe looks in magazines. Joe finds a car he likes. Joe goes to see the car with his dad. He really likes it. Joe doesn't have enough money. Joe's dad tells him to keep saving his money. Joe wants this car a lot. Joe asks his dad to help him. Joe and his dad make a deal. Joe's dad will lend him the money. Joe must work hard. He must pay the money back to his dad. Joe is very happy. Joe owns his first car. Summer Vacation Today is the last day of school. It is summer vacation. Grace is very excited. This summer will be fun. Grace is going to visit her grandparents. They have a cottage. The cottage is on Lake Erie. It is a lot of fun. Grace is going to swim. She is going to play board games. She is going to talk with her grandparents. Grace is going to have fun. Grace is going to a summer camp. She will sleep in a cabin. She will make lots of new friends. Grace will learn campfire songs. Camp will be fun. Grace is going to Cape Cod with her parents. We are going for two weeks. We are going to drive. Grace will see the ocean. Cape Cod will be beautiful. Summer vacation is fun. I think you already know that if you want to improve your English speaking skills, you have to practice, right? You have to speak. Studying grammar will never improve your speaking. Listening to English alone will never improve your speaking. You have to actually speak. But what if you don't have someone to talk to in English? How can you practice then? Well, there's a technique that allows you to learn to speak English by yourself. No speaking partner is required. This technique can help improve many aspects of your spoken English. Your sentence structure, your grammar, your vocabulary, and most importantly, your ability to express your thoughts and ideas effectively. So what is this technique? Well, here's what it is. Learning to speak English through imitation. When I say imitation, I'm not talking about repeating after native speakers using the exact same words to improve your pronunciation. I'm talking about something a little more advanced than that. Here's how it works. You listen to a conversation, a story, or some kind of speech, and then try to deliver that speech in your own words. Let's see this technique in action. When I was a child, when he was a child, my parents like to pretend like many other parents. His parents like to pretend like many other parents. That Santa Claus would bring us presents at Christmas. His parents like to pretend that Santa Claus would bring them presents at Christmas. So when my siblings and I would wake up on Christmas morning, so when he and his siblings would wake up on Christmas morning, there would be a bunch of presents from supposedly Santa Claus sitting in front of the fireplace. There'd be a bunch of presents from supposedly Santa Claus sitting in front of the fireplace. So that's how it works. But that's just one way to do it. There are other ways too. 
For example, instead of imitating very small portions of speech, like phrases and short sentences, you can imitate larger portions of speech. So in this case, you wait until the speaker completes a thought or an idea, then pause and try to express that idea yourself. Another approach is to simply listen to the whole speech and then try to deliver that entire speech yourself. So there are several ways to go about it, but what I recommend is to combine them all together, and I call this approach easy to hard imitation. Easy to hard imitation is based on the concept of progressive training. The idea is that you start with something easy, and then increase the difficulty of the activity, forcing yourself to get better. A number of studies have found this kind of training to be very effective. Here's how you can apply this concept: start by imitating small portions of speech first, like phrases and short sentences. Then move on to imitating larger portions of speech, like long sentences or even groups of sentences. And finally, try to deliver the entire speech on your own. This technique offers many benefits. You get to listen and imitate correct English, which helps you learn to form sentences properly. You get to learn idioms, expressions, and other speaking patterns that are used in day-to-day -day conversations. You get to learn grammar. When you imitate other people, you're learning grammar through a process called implicit learning. This is the process where the learning happens without your awareness. This is how babies and children learn the grammar rules of their first language. When you imitate, you don't think about grammar. You're not trying to understand why the present perfect tense is used in this situation or in that situation. Instead, you're focused on communication, on understanding and expressing ideas. You're still learning grammar, but you're not aware that it's happening. This is one of the proper ways to learn grammar. Okay, that concludes this video. To help you get started, I've put together a step-by-step -step tutorial on this technique. If you're interested, click here to go to that tutorial.